Hello friends, Sniz here, and uh, we're, we're back again uh, with another shark speak, I guess. I don't really know what to call this, but doing my best to try and have a more coherent topic this time. Because the last one I recorded was in September, and then I never did it again, and that video finally saw the light of day this past week. End? Weekend? I don't remember when it released. Either way, it's out now, and the reception was pretty good, I guess. So I guess we're back trying again instead of me just hiding these videos away for myself to reflect on. I only have one word written down for the topic at hand today, and that is bossing. Uh, if you may, if you do not know, I am in the process of liberation, and I am currently on the eighth and final liberation mission, which is Varus Hilla. I don't know how to phrase myself super well here so I might come off as kind of elitist and I don't mean to it's just like how I want to tackle these challenges I'm doing them with more restrictive I'm being more restrictive on what I can use so I'm not using healing fans because I think that defeats the purpose of the boss and it's just healing fans like if I have damage familiars I'll use those because like I, I don't believe cutting yourself out from damage is a big thing, is like as big of a deal as healing when the core mechanic of the boss is not being able to heal traditionally. Either way, I wanted to touch up on it because I still have not completed it and we're nearing the weekly reset. The new patch is tomorrow for a Guardian Slime, so that'll be my last attempt before a weekly reset and I will either, I will lose my V Hilla run for the week and it'll bleed into next week, which is not fun. But I'm making progress. I've gotten down... It's three bars, health bars, and I've almost gotten it down to the last health bar before shit just hits the fan because I'm not consistent in my bossing. I've only done three attempts, I think. Three or four attempts. So, like, I, I think I'm making good progress. Uh, three liberation attempts because liberation has a health bar less than the traditional Vihila. I think I'm making good progress, but we'll see. Hopefully the fourth or fifth time. I'm not sure which run I'm on will be the charm, but we'll see. Uh, I guess on topic of liberation, that I also wanted to talk about how I, I did a podcast type thing with Vedu, my party leader for Black Mage, not too long ago. Uh, and in there, I it got cross-posted to Reddit, uh, and I saw some comments, thought it was kind of elitist how I thought dual liberation was a cop-out but I just wanted to kind of clarify that I do believe it was a cop-out but not for the reasons that were stated that like people inferred I think it was a cop-out because there was fundamental issues with how classes could handle the do the solo liberation missions like how were classes like Mercedes and uh, Night Lord supposed to handle bombs and P1 of Lucid if they couldn't get out fast enough and the answer is, they couldn't reliably do it. So, Nexon eventually had to f address those fundamental issues with the bosses, but it took longer and didn't necessarily need to be done. Duo Liberation didn't need to be done. In fact, it gave them an excuse to prolong fixing like other bosses such as Will. Like, Will P1 tests, you don't have to have a summon now, or an iframe to get through uh, the tests. You can just hit the same side you are to shield yourself. And that wasn't a thing when Duo Liberation released. Uh, I, I just think there's... And then there's, like, just fundamental class design flaws. Like, certain classes just can't handle certain mechanics easily or very well, if at all, by themselves. And, like, yeah, you can say it's always a lack of damage. And, and with Reboot's final damage change, like, it's not really an issue anymore for, like, any class. I think the only class that remains to be seen is Demon Avenger. But even then, like, they can cheese, or not even cheese, but they can, they can use healing familiars. Because, like, using familiars isn't necessarily cheating. It's just using a resource that I prefer not to. I mean, in a party setting, I'll act absolutely use healing familiars in Behilo. Because coordinating a party to cleanse when someone drops low is ridiculously difficult. And in a solo setting, I find it a lot easier to just make up your mind. Oh, I'm going to cleanse. But that's neither here or there. I just think that Duo Liberation was a, an excuse to not fix the solo issue, the issues with bosses that were encountered when you were soloing them, specifically when you were soloing them. 
trying to gather my thoughts right now because that was like the big topic but i i guess i also just believe that like this is i think the, the like if you wanted to call me an elitist for anything you call me an elitist here uh i think like the duo liberation also kind of doesn't invalidate completely like you still have to learn mechanics for sure like there's 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 no question about that but i i think the will solo is tremendously more different like way different from uh, a will duo just due to how the webs work in p3 and how moonlight gathering is so so much slower than compared to like normal will that like you are eventually going to get closed in unless you kill it fast enough right like that's just how it works you can hold for upwards of like s i think the longest hold is like eight or nine minutes in korea but like you can hold for ridiculous amounts of time if you're if you're if you're a god gamer i am not my clear was a 3 minute 45 second hold, I think, and that's ridiculously low when the average hold is supposed to be like 4 minutes for a clear. And that's just the final damage change. Before the final damage change, I was expected to need like 4 minutes and 15 seconds to clear. And as soon as the final damage change hits, I was able to like monkey it and clear. Like I had two really bad attempts, and I still came super, super close to clearing it. That's a water spirit. I guess I should mention I am grinding on Alara right now. It's 238 currently, uh, inside path in Arcana. It's been, it's been entertaining. Uh, I like the class a lot, at least for farming, because it's summon farming, and summon farming is always relaxing for me, even though these summons don't last nearly as long as I would like them to. 18 seconds on summons is kind of annoying to just constantly be jumping around to replace them but like I, I understand why they did it giving 30 second summons to especially like summons as strong as Lara's would be kind of ridiculous for KMS so I can see why they made them a lot more uh, a lot shorter duration to encourage you to keep moving and keep replacing but even then like we can still take advantage of them with spawn enhancers and grind in smaller maps so we don't have to move as far to replace Lara is... I haven't bossed on Lara much. It seems to have a decent amount of tools. It doesn't have an innate iframe, but it has a huge amount of damage reduction, like 55% damage reduction uh, on a hold down skill, which is supposed to shield you. I think there's also a hyper for it, so it gives you an extra HP shield when it's active. But I don't know. I, I, I haven't really bossed on it extensively. I am currently 14k stat. Uh, we'll eventually try some bossing, like, harder bossing. I'm probably gonna go for a Lotus solo after I can down Sea Vellum, but Sea Vellum should be pretty simple, all things considered. It's just bind and burst. It's just, like, figuring out how the summons and everything work alongside, uh, how, like, what to summon and what to absorb. I know the general rule of thumb is you absorb sun and then everything else you summon so wind and water you summon because the damage gained from absorption is not nearly as beneficial as the damage gained from the summons uh i know she's a burst class which is way different to than from what i'm used to where i'm constantly having to keep dps up Just going back to bossing i guess I, i'm working on like all the tenebrous boss solos now dark Nell is not really getting much effort put into it but uh Sea Gloom is my the next on the chopping block too. I know it was done by Scuba Edamon. He's another Thunderbreaker at two. I don't know what level he is right now, but he he was the third two seventy five Thunderbreaker and he soloed it. Uh, I can't see myself soloing Gloom without using the use of the Kerr Ring though until I unlock Jenny Iframe because some of those darkness patterns are just so ridiculous and not timing them well. Like if you don't time them well, you're kind of forced into using it. Or just taking a death, like it's either or. Uh, getting back into the swing of things, this map is. I don't normally check my rates, but I wanted to see how I was, how well I was doing compared to others, because I've heard 900 mil rates are possible here. I don't know if it's because I'm not strong enough or because my rotation's bad. It's probably a mix of both, in all honesty, because I'm not full wiping. Uh, but I know I, I'm on pace for 800 mil, which is good. Like 850, I think. And I'm talking now, so like I wasn't expecting to do super well. But that's just rates. I'll close my bat battle analysis as soon as I finish this hour so I don't think about them as much. Because again, as long as I can 
clear my mind and just grind is normally okay. But not clearing my mind and and forget and focusing hyper focusing on raids actually leads to me just getting stressed out for no reason when it's just it's just money. It's just meso. It's just a video game, but I get I want to make the best raids possible for like most efficient efficient use of my time, but and that's not always possible, and you should just be enjoying the game. And I enjoy Lara, like I enjoy farming on it. I enjoy Kana farming too. I did not enjoy Spanish farming though, when that was the thing. That was boring. I'd rather play the game. Again, looping back to the bossing, since that was literally the only word I wrote down for this, and I got off topic a little with Lara. Uh, but I think it makes sense since I'm playing her. Uh, sea Gloom is. A very difficult boss for Thunderbreaker. Even fully buffed, like it's gonna be like a 25 minute run for me post final damage changes, which is kind of ridiculous. So I don't think I had any chance of soloing it prior, pre final damage changes since I got 30% stronger. If it was, if I was capable of doing it, it was literally a buzzer beater. But we'll see because I I gotta optimize more and practice more. Maybe I can get it down to like a 20 minute solo. I doubt it because that you're limited in when you can do damage. But we'll. You know, it's it's good to push yourself. That's like another thing I've found is like I'm so afraid of failing out of these bosses that I just don't even attempt, which is really bad because the only way to get better is to fail, learn, and go back in and try again. But like I psych myself out by like if I can't do it now, then I'll never be able to do it. But that's not necessarily the case. Like I am capable of learning bosses. I mean, I've gotten through Black Mage, like literally finishing my first clear with one life and then going to, you know, not necessarily being in danger of lifing out every, every every subsequent month. I think the only time I was even remotely close to dying out was like five lives, and that was when I had I was I was I had like a I I was sick. I don't remember if it was a the booster shot for COVID or I was just generally sick, but I was not feeling tip top shape when I did that run. I was not fully mentally there. So, Lara's kit is primarily summon focused when mobbing, at least that's how I prefer to play, I prefer to play summons. You can play absorptions, which is a different playstyle, and I don't know how relevant that is in GMS's meta of spawn enhancers, but I know her summon farming is ridiculous. Uh, on top of that, she has like manifestations, which are like the, they're like party-wide buffs, except for the water one, which I'm not using, because that's for farming primarily. Uh, but she has party-wide buffs where she can give 25% damage for 20 seconds to her party members, but it gives her 20 25% damage for two minutes, and the skills up like every minute. Uh, and then she has, and it heals 10% of your health every two seconds, for like 10 seconds I think. So you get 50% of your health back while standing in it. And then her other one, the Wind Manifestation, gives uh, attack speed plus one for 20 seconds to party members, two minutes for yourself. And then it also allows you to blink, like have a blink-like effect. Like you can float within it if you hit the up arrow while you're within the vicinity. And that's, Lara's kit is, uh, at least in this map, it's really just jumping back and forth, placing wind and uh, Wind and Sun, and then looting the top every so often to make sure you don't let the mess OG spawn. And then that's about it for side path. So, with all this said and done, I just finished my 30 minute coupon, and we've been talking for roughly 15 minutes, but I'll, it, it'll probably be cut down so the video won't actually be 15 minutes long, because there's a few parts where I'm just blankly staring at my screen. But thank you for joining with me. I will work on getting that V Hello Liberation out soon. Don't know how soon, but soon. I'll be up within the month so I can liberate next month while I'm visiting my girlfriend. But we'll see. We shall see. Goodbye, friends.